everybody. I am Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa. And this has been one of the most requested paintings I have done all season, which is a holiday red truck. Now, we had one from before that was super popular for fall. This is now our winter. I'm really excited to see what you guys do with it because you were so creative with the last one. Get your paint, get your brushes, come back and meet me at the easel right now. We're going to paint this vintage red truck. So let's look at the materials we're going to be using in today's really fun video. Now, right here, I have a 9 by 12 artboard. It's in one of those canvas packs that you find for acrylic painting. It's just ready to go. I don't need to do another thing to it. I have the colors Thalo Blue, uh, Mars Black, Titanium White, Cad Red Medium, Cad Yellow, Thalo Green, and Burnt Sienna. To get the background in, I'm going to want to take a fairly nice, chunky, big, wide brush. This is a number 30 ruby satin, and it's got a big, big brush head on here. So it's going to let me cover a lot of territory in a short amount of time. And I'm going to do something called loosely loading, which means I'm going to pull a little paint into my brush, like you might expect. You can see I'm just pulling it over both sides to get some in. But I'm also going to grab loose bits of other colors. So you can see that's very loosely mixed. And I'm going to paint my surface at an angle back and forth using that method. So reloading again. Now you've seen how we get there. And we'll go real fast through this. Remember not to mix anything too seriously on the surface because you do want a streaky effect. Just back and forth. All right, change it up every time that you go. We're just talking about a windy day that's cold and blustery. Maybe grab a little more black and white, make it a little more wintry, a little more cold. There you go. Breathe in, breathe out, because sometimes we hold our breath when we paint, especially if we're new. You don't want to do that. Now, because I have a lip on my easel, I may flip my surface over, and that can help me have an easier time getting the load in to cover the painting. Now, once I have that basic in where I can totally see how that's going to be, I'm going to come here and make sure that I'm happy with my soft streaking. If I'm not, what I'm going to want to do is come back. I'm going to kind of dry off my brush and I'll get some just white onto my surface. And I'm just going to very lightly come through streaking with this white. Can you guys see how that's done? It's just a little bit of a streak. I'm not trying to lighten the sky. I'm just adding some of that tonality to make sure that it's a little bit action oriented. This is an action sky. And what that just basically means is that we're implying wind or activity through the textures we're using. I'm keeping my pressure soft and I'm flipping my brush. You can kind of see how that's coming here. Things to watch for is to get too chunky at the edge, but listen, we're going to be adding a little snow bank there. So that's really not going to mess you up. Now, when you get this exactly how you like it, where you feel like it's a bit of a gust coming down, and it's really expressing that like fun yet bitter cold that winter can create. It's a good time to dry it so we can do the next part of the painting. Rinse out your brushes, put them aside, and dry. Once your surface is completely dry, you can take your chalk. This is the kind of chalk that I might use on a chalkboard. And you can either sketch in your truck 
or you can use the traceable now. Now, if you're using the traceable and you've never used a traceable before, make sure again that you go to the link below, to the description below and click to it because on that video page is an extra video about how to use a traceable. Remember, tracing isn't cheating. Drawing is just a technique. I'm gonna show you how I draw this in, but it's okay to just skip this and do the tracing. So when I'm looking at this space, I'm gonna wanna divide it where it's sort of interesting and exciting. So I'm not gonna show everything. And what I mean by that is I'm gonna put my truck in, but I'm only gonna show half of my vintage truck. I want a little bit of space for snow and stuff here. So I'm gonna start the bumper. This is just almost four fingers from the bottom. And I'm gonna come over, not quite to the halfway point, but nearly there. And I'm gonna make my little bumper. My bumper actually helps me figure out where the rest of my stuff on my truck might go. And you can see the chalk lets me really sketch things out, but also change my mind. Look, it's really easy to add or take away. Now, once I have that, I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna give myself a wheel which is just a little rectangle. I'm not gonna take it all the way to the bottom because we're gonna put a little snow bank here. Now, there's a wonderful kind of little rounded fender that comes right here. And then we're gonna round the front of our little truck. That's pretty good. Exaggerating those things. Let's put in a nice headlight. And then coming up from this seam here is where I'm gonna do my cab. Now I like to round that a bit. And the window will happen right here. So that's how we're gonna build that truck in. Now coming from there off to the side, right? And we can barely see it, is going to be our tree that's hanging out. And then remember, we're gonna have a little grill here, but we're also gonna have a wreath. So we don't wanna get so caught in all of those details that we don't have room to put in our wreath. No point to do the hard work and then paint over it, though we do do that a lot sometimes. It's also good sometimes to give yourself a little reminder of where you're going to be adding a bit of your landscape when you're done. Now, once you have a sketch in that you like, Remember, you can erase any lines that you don't want or change them in any way that you need, right? With just a clean brush and a little bit of water. Comes right off. That's why we use this type of chalk and not oil pastel, because if we used an oil pastel, this would all be ruined. I'm gonna take a number four round and I'm gonna get it wet. And I'm gonna go ahead and with black, outline all of my truck. So I'm just gonna get my brush all juicy. And what I mean by juicy is I'm bringing a couple drops of water, smoothing it into the paint, thinning it with the water so that it flows off my brush really, really well. And then I'm gonna very carefully come here and freehand in the truck. Because we're doing this in kind of a rustic style, what's really nice is that we don't have to be so perfect. I'm gonna draw my little tire in. There you go, just paint it all solid black. Nice big chunky tire. Probably would have chains or something on it, but we're gonna pretend this is a magic truck and it doesn't need chains. How's that look? That's looking really good, right? So once you have that there, you're gonna do kind of a fun thing. We're gonna grab a tool called a fan brush. Now, here are the two that I can say for sure will get this done with heavy body paint. This is a hog bristle brush and this is a synthetic filament brush, but what they both have in common is that they're very stiff. And when the brush is very stiff, it lets me do the heavy body paint. If you use a soft brush for it, the fan will separate and become four fingers. Also, if you don't have a fan, you can always take a round brush and smish it between your fingers to try to get a similar effect. Some people like to tape these down and use it temporarily for their fan technique. But I highly recommend just having one of these at least in your pocket. Now this is the Arch Sherpa one with the very st stiff filaments and this is a hog and I'll show both. I'm gonna get this brush wet. I'm gonna come put a little bit of my black into it and some of my green. And it's going to just darken that just a smidge. 
And first, you know, you come up and you tap up and down. See how I'm on the rail of the brush, tapping up and down? And then when I come to the end, I'm going to just add little bits of, oh, I'm the top of the tree. I'm very delicate, right? So here we go. Just coming along there. And we're going to hold the handle at an angle towards us. That's called down. And we're going to make our little tree coming off the back of our truck. Not too hard. As we go back, the branches will get bigger and longer because the tree is getting more full. You can see it has just slipped off the back here. Now, here I may bring some of my branches where I know I'm going to be painting even over those lines. And that's going to help it feel more complete and special to that space. Go through. Make sure that you're happy with your little fan brush pine tree. I like to rinse this out a bit and I'm going to let that dry. I'll probably actually dry it with a hair dryer so I can do the snow effect on it next. Okay, so that looks pretty good right there. Now let's come in here and I'll show you how to add some snow. I don't want to get my brush too wet. And I'm going to get some white paint, maybe a little blue, but mostly white, right? And I'm going to load up my brush and I'm going to do a very similar thing. I'm going to come down and tap up and down a little bit of snow there. And we're going to naturally, this is natural flocking, <laughs> flock our tree, right? With a little bit of natural flocking. Here it goes. It's coming home. Just put some. Now, on the top of those little branches coming down, and that makes that a very nice, charming little tree. Now, while that's having a dry, I don't actually have to dry my uh, tree again because I've got some other painting I can do while it's drying. So I'll show you. I'm going to take my number four round, and I'm going to grab my Just Blue. And I'm going to come paint the inside of my window with my Just Blue. Now, I know a lot of you guys thought I was going to do my uh, fall holiday truck uh, just changed up for, uh, for the winter, but I actually like to change the view on occasion, you know, give us things that tie together perhaps, but have slightly different kind of outcome. When you have that blue there, and it's nice and still wet, go ahead and come get a little bit of white and come here and swivel in a bit of a reflection. See how my brush just kind of wiggled there? It comes across here and it goes wiggle, wiggle. Some of it is white. And I'm just making sure that this window looks like it's reflective. That's fantastic. Rinsing out vigorously, getting all the pigment out. The next one that I can do is I'm going to take just a little bit of my yellow and I'm going to put a smidge, a smidge of my cat into it. And you got to be careful. It's hard to get to a smidge with cat red. But I'm going to come into this part of my headlight and just put this slightly orange yellow in going around. Now, I don't want you guys to be too worried about your lines because we come back at the end and refirm our black line. This just gives us zones that we're working in. So now we've got the window and the yellow, and we're going to put in the gray of our bumper. I might as well keep using my um, number four round. It's perfectly fine. And to make gray, I'm going to just mix black and white. And you can see this is thoroughly mixed, and you know I'm thoroughly mixing it because I'm swirling the colors together to incorporate them into one color. I'm going to come here still with this number four round and just start to paint in our bumper. Just painting in the bumper. Breathe in, breathe out. You're painting, good creative time.
Sometimes I might have to go back to my paint several times to kind of get my brush to cover. And usually what that's about is not having enough paint or enough water on my brush to get the paint to flow. So I do that pretty quickly. It might not be as obvious for you guys at home that that's what's happening to me, but know when that's happening to you, it's also happening to me. And that's just a normal part of what's going on in our painting. Now I could paint in all of the truck with my number four, but that's going to be a very slow process. So I'm going to grab a uh, slightly bigger brush and paint in the rest of this. Let me look for a nice bright that will get all of that done. All right, this is a number six ruby satin and it's a bright and it just it means it's a nice short filament square brush. That's all we're looking for, just something to make all the filling in easy. Now for my first layer, I'm gonna take a little blue over to my CAD red, all right? And I'm gonna add it in here. It doesn't make purple. That's always confusing to people when they're first painting is how sometimes red and blue doesn't make purple. In this particular case, it makes a fabulous brick color. So just as you can see, a little bit darker than the main red. And I'm gonna paint in all of the truck Boom, 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 with this darker red. Pretty fun stuff. If you like painting, if you didn't like painting, this is not fun. <laughs> Hopefully you're watching this video because you like painting and this is a project you'd like to do and have on your wall or maybe give to a friend who is into this type of decor right now. Listen, and I'm gonna tell you right now, uh, trucks in red aqua and green are really hot right now as decor so you're going to see all kinds of artwork like this similar to this out there on the internet on towels on all of that that's a trend that's happening right so it's important to remember that um you know people don't own an idea right it's just their image that they have rights to. So don't feel bad that you're painting a red truck if you go out there and see that there's a tea towel with the red truck. Because <laughs> they're out there. Right? And that's what's fun about painting. One of the things I like about it is, is if something is really exciting to me in the decor space, I can just make accompanying paintings that go with it. And I'm coming around my black lines and really painting my red in because I'm going to what? I'm going to come back with my black line again when I need it to define those spaces. So this first run of black lines just really help me see the different zones on my truck. But I can come in here and carefully paint around it. Now, here's an area where you might be struggling depending on the paint you're using. Where we painted the tree over the red. You see my paints covering that up, no problem. I'm using a paint that has a lot of pigment in it, so it does that. And if you want to know more about that, you can check my description below. And I talk about all kinds of paint and a lot of information about it. But if you're painting a paint that isn't covering that, there's two things you can do. You can dry between the layers and do two or three layers until it covers. Or you can go back and paint white over it, dry that, and then paint your red. But just know if that's happening to you that's not weird and it's not you just some paint is thinner in its pigment than others and that's all that's going on you can see i just keep thoroughly mixing in that color i'm painting this in great you got this now at this stage this is what we call kind of the awkward or ugly stage of a painting we haven't started to put in the highlights or the things that make something just look beautiful and so when you're new to painting, sometimes you'll be very critical of your painting at this stage. So I want you to take a deep breath and believe in yourself a little bit. All you've got to do is get to the end and finish to get a result that you like. So right now, what you should have is your gray bumper, your black wheel, everything's sort of sketched in. You've got your yellow headlight, the brick color all over the truck, this great reflective window, and a flocked tree in the back. While this is having a bit of a dry, I'm gonna come back, I think, to my red, and I'm gonna be fanciful, because I'm a fanciful person, and I'm gonna grab some of my red paint, 
while I've got it on to my number four round. And you'll notice that I'm loading it fairly thick on the tip. And that's because I want to do little red. Not that anybody <laughs> would load this into a truck and drive it around. It's just that it feels like it would be fun. And so I want to do it. And we're just painting little circles. Kind of decorating the tree, right? Just a little bit. You could leave it just a pine. Remember, when you're doing tutorials and paintings, you know, with me or anybody else, it's still your canvas. It still has to go up in your house. So if there's something about the painting that you've got to change, like a color, like maybe your grandfather had a truck just like this, but it was yellow. Well, if that's meaningful to you, that's what you should do. Don't worry about changing it. Have fun. Use the colors that you have. You know, it's just, I think, fun to add a little bit of little decor. I'm going to let rinse out my brush and I'm going to get a little bit of my yellow and I'm going to come through and add some little lights. All right. Just through our little tree that's sort of fun, little glowing bits of light. Decorating it up just a bit because we want to. Rinsing out. Now a couple things have happened. Stuff has started to dry on my truck. So the next thing that I can add is a space for license plate. I like to add the license plates because you can um, then come back and put a name in them or personalize them in some way. I'm going to do something, a color that's lighter than my bumper color. I don't mind that I've got a little bit of blue into it because I do want it to be a different color. And if this is like going to be kind of almost central on the hood, I'm going to put my plate right here. All right, kind of coming off. It's a very weird long truck. <laughs> don't worry about that. All right, so there we go. We've got a little plate there. I'm going to come into my center light here. And I'm going to go ahead and grab some just yellow. And let's add like a little bit of just yellow. And grab some white on the inside of that. Coming to the center of the headlight, okay? So we've got like some values and things that are happening there. It just gives it a little bit of extra glow. And when we put the glow around the front, that'll be a lot of fun. Now, really quick, if this is dry... Then you can do the next layer of the red. And in that layer, I'm going to come and just get just red. Right? And I'm going to put this on my number six bright. This is a number six bright. And I'm going to do something that's called painterly and dry brushing. So those two words together, what they mean is that I don't have a lot of water in my brush. So the paint will skip over the canvas. And painterly means that I'm going to not hide the brush strokes. In fact, I'm going to try to show them. Right? I'm going to be very loose about it. And that kind of also helps inform the kind of rustic feel. See how I move the brush around? I'm trying to inform that rustic feel about the truck. You know, it's well cared for. It is loved. Definitely curving this right here. Loading back up. You can see I'm not getting a lot of water. I'm going to come over that and curve that and maybe come down and under and everything across here I might definitely kind of be loose about now the truck is getting bright isn't it getting very 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 bright and then also going to add that bit right there looking pretty darn good. So this is a good time to do uh, any cleaning up of the chalk that you want. Remember, make sure that your paint is dry where you're cleaning up the chalk where you don't want it because you don't want to, you know, mess that up. Another thing that we can do is I can come in with a little bit of wiggling on my brush to kind of imp like imply a tire tread. <laughs> I'm going to get into my round brush 
And I'll get my black paint here. And I'm swirling it out. I'm thinning it out. So I dip in the water and I thin it out. The number four round. It's got a nice point. And I'm going to come here and start to make some of my more finalized lines. See how that's just creating a little more stability on this object. That's fun. I do this at this stage now, guys, because when we put the snow on, we're going to want, I'm going to maybe make some lines there. All right. Let's make sure. Now, if you want a rear view mirror, this is the time to put that on. You could say this truck has a rear view mirror. Or you could say it doesn't because farm trucks don't always have to. But what I'll say is keep in mind this area is already very busy and you may want to skip it. Sometimes things, uh, you skip things in art, not because of any other reason than you know that those extra lines and extra marks will make the piece kind of busy and then therefore not really read the way that you might want it to. Now you might think that I was going to do the grill part, right, with uh, my round brush, but I'm actually going to use my uh, bright brush, my number six bright. You can see I'm loading both sides and I'm going to just go ahead and very loosely make these little marks here. See how we're doing? We're not being, we're not looking for the factory model of that. We're just saying there's a grill or something up front. While this is all having a dry, I can come back in and I can start to paint some snow. So I'm gonna take my little fan brush and you can kind of see how on the bristles that, this isn't so bad because it's hog, but some will be very badly like absolutely separating. I'm gonna just take this brush and I'm gonna kind of put my surface to the side here. Okay, there's a surface to the side and I'm gonna come here and just sort of wiggling my brush. See, I'm wiggling, wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. I'm gonna put my first sort of blue and I will go ahead and kind of fluff those little edges and scruffle along. This is scruffling. <laughs> See how we're scruffling? Sometimes it's good to scruffle. I'm gonna rinse out. And I'm going to go ahead and put out some more white because I've gone through a lot of my white. I'm going to get a little bit of white onto the brush. And while it's all still wet, I'm going to come here. And I'm see I'm holding the handle uh, parallel to the canvas and I'm just wiggling down up over the tire and I leave open spaces where there's the dark blue and I'm going to just pull this in. Let's load back up. This is super fun. Doo, doo, doo. And we're going to come back this way. The fan brush is a very effective brush for many uh, different landscaping techniques. Most people think of it as being there for pine trees, but actually we're going to do a pretty good job of having it be for um, snow and things. Now, while this is all drying here, because I'm going to want to put a very bright white layer in it, like here and in a couple of places around sort of implying that the truck is going over tracks, I'm going to let this dry for a minute. And while I'm letting that dry, I'm going to go ahead and take some of my burnt sienna in my green and that's going to make me some hunter's green right and i'm going to imagine that there's a nice big kind of wreath i'm going to just draw this little circle right here when i have that there all i'm going to do is just really load up my brush quite thick and I'm gonna just make little touches around my wreath. Sometimes it helps me to turn my surface around a bit. And I'm just touching the brush, just the tip, 
to the surface, pulling back. So it's a touch and pull, touch and pull. That's all we're doing. And I move this surface so that I don't have to strain to keep the directionality of the wreath. And you can be kind of crazy and a little bit messy with it uh, because wreaths can be that way, can't they? Sometimes they're not, you know, small and tiny. And I find that having the little shadows where I can have them is really helpful to me. Now we're gonna let that dry for a second. Rinse out vigorously. And just to be sure, I'm gonna get some white onto my brush. And I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna make some reflections across the hood. And then a little wiggle. And then a stroke down. Ah, it's pretty. It's pretty chill. Pretty mellow. <laughs> You've got this. You can kind of see how it's going to go. I'm going to put a little bit here, a little mark up there at the front, and then just swerve it down. Maybe another little layer. This is just some reflections. A little there. And this sort of implies, let's come across there, that there's a shininess to our truck. We like that. Didn't like that. When we have that in. Let's pick up our fan again. And I do want a little blue into this, but mostly a lot of white. I'm gonna come here and I'm going to add this first thought of that there's a little bit of snow on the top. It's almost the same color as the sky. We really will need that second layer, right? And I like that this is curved because it can help me keep the curve of what I've got. And I can even, Put some snow on that window. Loading, loading, loading. Where else would the snow maybe possibly hit? Well, it would definitely maybe come at the top of that and the top of that. And we could see some sort of across there, right? So now we've got that beginning of snow. And that's still a little bit wet. So we're going to come here. And I'm gonna go ahead and while I'm thinking about it, take my brush and outline my headlight with black. I need to define that. That'll help later when I go to make the little headlight glow all around there, because definitely gonna to wanna to glow. Let's get our green. Let's go ahead and put a little yellow into it so it's a bit brighter. And I might even get some white. And I'm gonna come through and put my Breathe in with these highlighted greens. Same stroke, pull. But you can see how underneath having the darker green gives some dimensionality to our wreath. Look at that. So now we have a little bit of a wreath that's on the front of our car. Right. There you go. Now everything needs to be dry for the next bit. So I find it can be helpful to give it a dry at this stage before we put on the next part. All right. It's pretty cute. It's pretty festive. Let's finish it up. So right now I'm going to take my number four round and just on the tip of my brush here, I'm going to take some white and I'm going to go ahead and add a little light of reflection to our Christmas bulbs. That's pretty nice. I'm also going to come here and I've just wiped off the white. I'm going to get some of my yellow and I'm going to come here and I'm going to go around just on my number with my number four round, making circular brush strokes that kind of irradiate around. One of the nice things about yellow is that it's so transparent that sometimes it's like a glaze when you do it. And then I can always come back with a little bit of white into it to accentuate some of that reflection or that glow, making it more profound. I'm gonna go ahead and take my fan brush now and get really into the white paint, which hopefully is gonna show quite well. And I'm going to come right here and I'm going to tap the top of my little snow up and down, tapping the brush up and down. Look at that. 
tapping the brush up and down and a little bit into the window as well. All right, they're going to need to get those windshield wipers going. Cooking along. How are you doing? Hopefully great. Now let's come along here and add a little bit of snow to that. And we're going to come on top of the snow and we're going to put some little highlights. So back to that angle, right? Brush here. Very dry brushing the highlight onto the snow. That's not too bad. Just a little bit of a snowy hill there. And I might put a little bit in some here as it's coming forward, kind of implying it could be getting that. Come here. Sometimes it's helpful to tap up and down to make it more snow like because the brush has such interesting texture that it does. Maybe a little bit in front of my wheel so we can really see what's going on. Looking pretty good. It's looking pretty awesome. And this is great. And from here you could be done, but I think there's one more step that would make this fun. I'm gonna go ahead and take some of my fluid paint. I'm gonna pop this open because I left the cap open. <laughs> Other use for my dotting tool, right? I'm gonna put out a little bit of this fluid paint. Listen, if you don't have this, craft paint like deco americana in the bottles will be just fine for this it's not as ideal but it really will work in a pinch and so don't feel like pressured or stressed about it boom 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 i'm going to come here and i'm going to just flick snow all over this now if you've never flicked snow before again check the description below and those materials go to the website because there's a video on how to do splattering many different ways so if you don't have my galaxy brush here don't worry I have other ways to do it. I just want to snow up my painting. Now let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. Now we are coming home in the snow on a cold and blustery day. Can you see the snowflakes going? Pretty terrific. And it can be nice to go ahead and add some snow here to right there. And right at the tires can be really nice. So feel like you've got room to snow it up where necessary. <laughs> Just play and have a good time. And when that's all done, I take the last little bit of fluid paint that I have in a small detail brush. Let me see what I've got here. I have a number one Art Sherpa detail round. And all I've got to do is get my brush all loaded into that fluid paint. And I can come right down here where there's a little more blue than white and hide my signature all frosty into the snow. Hopefully you're feeling frosty too. I'm going to do a spring and summer version of our truck as well. So feel like if you're enjoying these, there's more coming for you in many styles and designs and colors. So you can totally get that all over your house. All right, boom, boom, boom. That was so much fun and I feel like it really captured the spirit of the season. So hopefully you had as much fun painting this as I did. Remember to be good to yourself, be good to each other, and I want to see you in an easel really soon. Bye-bye!